Hello everyone, I'm Hank's DSL. How you doing? Hi. Uh, let's talk about some ways in which Mac has forced me to spend money. Um, it's other than, you know, buying the Mac. Um, when I came from Windows to Mac OS, um, there have been a few things that I can't help but notice was remiss or missing. Um, and I talked about one of them in the last video, so I won't go over that again. But I talked about, I used a program called Magnet, which cost me about £4 from the App Store. And that just allows me to tile things to the left and right in a way that I find pre pretty good. Like, like it, it works for me. Um, so we won't talk about that. But then there are some other ways, and this is what got me thinking. There are some things, there are some ways in which I'm like, I've kind of had to spend money. Not had to, but like being encouraged to spend money. So let's talk about what they are. First of all, the menu bar on the Mac up here, by default, just zips across here until it gets to the notch and it won't go any further. So I've had to pick up Bartender or any other app that would stop it extending. Now, there are free options. In fact, let's uh, go over here. Ah, oh, spoilers. Uh, let's go over here to uh, Bartender. Now, Bartender, £16.80. That's a lot of money to hide some menu items because this ultimately is not a big problem, right? But I can't help but feel that Bartender does such a good job compared to alternatives that I almost don't mind paying the £16 because Bartender's elegant, it's got a proper interface and it's sane in the way it shows you things. Um, to put that in perspective here, uh, one of the applications I was using was called Hide Out and that just puts a button here when I click it, it slides out and anything to the left of the, the line it hides, anything to the right of the line it doesn't, I think, or something like that. Uh, Bartender just has this nice little this nice little second dock that drops down which is has all my stuff in there as well as giving me the ability to literally hide things i just never want to see so that magnet tool that puts that lets me have proper windows tile in i was like it's got shortcut keys i'm never going to use i'll just hide it forever and i just can ignore the fact it exists which has been great um but bartender as i said you can get a decent trial, four weeks trial, and then you get a prompt to purchase, but it's £16.80. It did not go on Black Friday sale, before anyone asks. Um, it's just that's how much it is. And then when Bartender 6 comes out, I assume I'll be expected to spend another $6 to upgrade to the new version, because that seems to be what it is. Um, but when you, find, when you try live without Bartender, and then live with Bartender, I'm like... I'm just going to pay the £60. <laughs> uh, there are other applications that hide uh, that are cheaper than Bartender, but Bartender has a few little nice features. Um, and it, I think the thing is about Bartender is it feels like a coherent application. It feels like it's an actual application, whereas, uh, whereas all the others feel like hacks, and Bartender just feels elegant. So I can't help but enjoy Bartender. Now, it's not in the Apple Store, and I have yet to understand what it means when something's not in the Apple Store. Like, what does it mean? Um, so, so yeah, uh, there's that. Uh, does it mean it's less reliable? Does it mean it's it breaking some terms of services? Does it mean they don't want to give Apple money? I genuinely don't know, but I, I always try and buy from the App Store if possible because I just kind of know where to find it again if I need it. But yeah, it's not on there, which is weird. Um, so that's Bartender, which is one way Apple made me spend £16.80 to a competitor, I guess, because it feels weird that this isn't just built into Apple, right? Because I think what macOS's thought process here is is that perhaps, yeah, perhaps macOS feel like they're adding layers of complexity that people don't want, but at the same time, just have an expert mode. The next way in which Apple made me spend money was because this is Spotlight. Spotlight's great. Spotlight works really well, but Spotlight will search and launch. It will search files, and it will launch programs. It will search the web if you can't find a file. But it has no nuance to it. It has no elegance to it, and that's where Alfred comes in. Now, Alfred is dope. It looks very like this is this is Spotlight by default, and this is Alfred after I made it slightly purple. Um, and with Alfred, I can hit spacebar, um, and I can type the name of an application, right? Um, which is my current workings on. Um, and I can hit enter, and it will load that application. Um, so just, again, I just hit the key combo for Spotlight, which is command space. I've got it set to that. And I hit space, and then I can just type the name of a local file. And it'll find a local file. If it can't find a file, it will offer me Google or Wikipedia as a secondary option. I don't love the backup searches, but, you know, whatever. It's there. I can turn it off anyway. Um, or if I just search for uh, keep, uh, Kepa, 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 like, for instance, if I want to launch it out. Kepa is a pretty good file um, um, archive manager, which is free, or you can buy it from the App Store for a couple of quid. Um, so, yeah, you, could, you, should, you should look at that. Kepa is 
uh, Kekka is pretty good. I can't say the name of it. Uh, but yeah, you can just see right there. It's going to not only launch the application, but tell me where I can find the application. Uh, notes, it's going to launch Apple Notes or OneNote. Uh, Obsidian, it's going to find Obsidian. It just finds all the apps. And then I just hit enter. But here's where the magic happens. Here's where Alfred is amazing. So what about if I type about? Oh, look at that. Look at that. All this information about my computer. <gasps> my IP address is out there. <gasps> ah, my primary Ethernet address. That's probably actually a problem. I don't know. That's probably fine. I'll just you can change it, right? I don't care. Um, so that that that's that's about the system. Display resolution, locale. Um, oh, I can I can just be like I can be like, what about storage? What about storage? Oh, yeah, look, there's all the storage on my Mac. Just a little thing. Um, I find this incredibly useful. Uh, also, it's got a universal calculator in it. So if I go a hundred miles in centimeters we know how many hundred miles in centimeters i'll just calculate anything and again i can hit enter there uh, and it just goes away it just copies the result to my clipboard um and then you go okay that's pretty cool that's pretty cool aha but that's not it because i've got a shortcut combo up so i can there you go there's that thing i copied so i can then just go boom and just get a clipboard manager now i did have mackie mackie's a good clipboard manager alfred is mwah, amazing clipboard manager um, for instance, if I was to take a screenshot of this little area of my screen with this button right here, take this screenshot, look, that, that's the screenshot tool, that's the screenshot shotter, I think it is, I'm not actually talking about that in this video, but that's another way Apple maybe spend money, now I think about it, um, and then I go into Alfred, Alfred will literally give me a preview of the image, so when I scroll down the list, it'll even preview what I'm about to paste, is if it's an image, or if it's text, it'll just give me a preview. I find that absolutely invaluable. Uh, it's lovely. Uh, Alfred also supports um, multiple clipping. So I can just go, so if I can go control C on some text, and then I can go control CC, and it just appends that to the end of the clipboard. So when I double tap C, it just appends, appends, appends. So uh, that sounds complicated, right? I, I realize that sounds complicated. Um, so let's bring up a text editor, uh, text editor. And it's going to go, where do you want it? And I want a new fucking text document. This, this is so fucking small this text editor this is i don't love this text editor um it's just this is put on like 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 36 so i can go uh copy this into uh clip so i can then take this word and i can go control c right and i can paste it there and that you'll see that's all that's in my copy buffer but now i can go uh cc and now i've got copy this and that's all that's in my copy buffer and now i can go uh cc and now I've got the oh my gosh, I'm just keep adding to this clipboard and then uh it's easy. And now you'll see <gasps> the ultimate uh the ultimate work. Yeah, you can just you can just keep appending to that clipboard. Now obviously you can't mix data types, like I can't have an image and some text, that'd be weird. And I can't have two images, that'd be weird, but just plain text, it'll just it'll just keep copy just CC, a command CC, and it'll just keep appending that clipboard. Which I found one of those things where I really think that's really cool, and it's something that I've not seen before on a different OS and stuff. Um, but I can't help but think I'm probably never going to use it. <laughs> so, so who knows? Uh, but it is pretty cool. I do enjoy that it does that. And again, we can go this, and we can then we can then see that it's appended that. So it's just appended the last entry in clipboard. It's not made a new entry for everything I've copied. It's just kept appending it, which is it's fine. Uh, this is a fine way of doing it. Um, but then if I bring up Alfred. Uh, and then I bring up uh, the command comma button to bring up its stuff. So you can see here there's all sorts of workflows and things that Alfred's got. One of the things I really like here is uh, if I go uh, TV uh, and then I think of a TV show that I want to search for, my brain's gone blank. Um, Parks and Rec, for instance. Um, there you go. I can hit enter there now and it'll just give a second and then I can find the IMDb rating from here. And I can go directly to the page on IMDb and stuff, which is really cool. Just click that, I'll just drop on IMDb. It's just really cool. And I can also go, um, oh, I'm on the wrong screen now. Look at this. Uh, I can also go movie as well, which is nice. Uh, now Alfred decided to go on the other screen. Um, yeah, who knows what that's about? <laughs> who knows? What, where, where is it not working now? Why is it? Oh, there you go. Um, I can also go uh, movie. Uh, and then I can, oh, movie, and I can go the Matrix. Uh, give it a second, and there's the Matrix. I want to know about the Matrix Reloaded, which is the best of the Matrix films. It is for lots of reasons. Um, you can find the ratings there, and as well as you can just go and just watch or trailer, um, or you can do you can look at the directors as well, which is pretty cool. And um, just click, and you'll get to the website, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, Alfred is. 
I thought it was really cool. Uh, now, I've got a lot more workflows on here than I actually need. I've just sort of been playing with it recently. Uh, but there is a workflow gallery. So you click on the gallery, you can go, they can just download other people's workflows they've made. Or if you want to make your own. I did a little tutorial online and I figured out how to make a hot key. So I can just be like, like boop and bring up Finder, which is, which is I've just realized on the other monitor. So it doesn't work. But I just hit that and Finder appears. Um, my, my mindset for this is Option Command plus Button is my Alfred shortcut. So Option Command plus Button is how I remember in my brain that's an Alfred shortcut. Um, and then I know where to put them. Um, so I'll go Option Command E. It'll bring me an emoji picker. And, and I can select the monkey emoji because it's the best emoji. It is. Um, and then hit Enter. And that's now copied into my buffer, which you can't see because it's just got a different monitor. It does behave a little bit odd with multi-monitors. In theory, it's whatever monitor the cursor's on that's where it's going to pop up but sometimes it just it seems to be when i've got the options open or when i've got certain things open it'll just only use the main screen but except when i'm recording youtube videos i just use one screen anyway so it's kind of a kind of non-issue for me and you like uh, and also uh, you got appearances so you can custom appearances there's this remote thing so um, to android or ios can send remote commands to alfred yeah, I'm, I have no reason to use that ever. And then there's an advanced option here, which gives some options. Uh, and you go in, okay, this is cool, but this is a video about how, this is not an Alfred video, it's a video about how Apple have made you spend money. Um, well, yes, because Alfred itself is free. You can get the basic features of launching applications and searching for free. But it's the power pack that takes it from, well, without the power pack, it's, you might as well just use Spotlight. There's no real benefit. You just, just use Spotlight, but then you need the power pack. So you go buy the power pack. And you'll find the power pack's 34 90, 34 pounds. Um, or you can pay 59 pounds to get a license, a lifetime upgrade. Now, I I did cheap out. I was a bit sad. And I was like, fuck it, I just want to play with something. So I just bought the 34 pound one. Um I'm so impressed. I'm kind of I'm kind of, I'm kind of like yeah. Uh, I'm kind of oh look at that. You can't you can't see the price for upgrade. Oh, that's stupid. Uh but yeah, I, I kind of think that it's overpriced at thirty four, not thirty four pound. I keep wanting to say thirty four ninety nine because that's how prices work. Thirty four pound, it's already overpriced in my opinion. Um, Fifty nine pound for what is essentially a fancy launcher it just seems ludicrous to me. Um, but it's also really good, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I did shoot myself in the foot by not upgrading, not doing that lifetime upgrade. Um, I dare say, I dare say there'll be an upgrade option to move to lifetime next time as well. Who knows? Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, okay, so we'll stay on the web browser now. We'll stay in, we'll stay in a Safari now to talk about other ways Apple have made me spend money. Um, now, for the start, I just want to say, Alfred, overpriced, not Apple's fault, right? But it's really good, so I'm kind of not even mad. that It's overpriced, yeah, but I'm not mad. Um, Barton are overpriced, but really good. So both these things aren't actually Apple's fault. It's not like Apple have made them bill us for these. They could have given them away free. There's a lot of things I've encountered on Apple, like Mac is a good example, where you get to the website and it just guides you to the store. But if you spend a bit of time looking at it, you can then go and go, oh, okay, what I really want is the free version of the website, uh, which is usually the same with a different colored icon or something, uh, which is a good way of doing it. Because again, if you like the application, I'll just buy it in the store so I know where to find it. I'm quite happy to buy it in the store. Um, so I'm not mad at Apple about this, but the mindset of... Like, Alfred is just called Rofi on, on Linux, and it's free. I mean, it's not the same, but, you know, you can. it's essentially the same, in, in functionally the same for the Linux users. So, I have kind of mixed feelings, but at no point do I feel regretful about buying either of these applications. Now, the one that does irk me slightly is Sponsor Block, because Sponsor Block cost me £3.99 in the store. £3.99 in the store. And you're going, Hex, that's, that's open source, you idiot. Just, just download it. That's what I thought. And then let's have a little look, she's out. Let's hit the Safari button. And you'll, you'll, there you go. And it's like, okay, so the App Store paid, okay, here. Or you can get the source code here, fuck you. Okay, also, all right. So uh, what about the Mac OS version? Oh, okay, what about the Mac OS version? Oh, wait, is the App Store version? Okay, this is the Mac OS and Mac OS. Both the same instructions, apparently. So I can download the latest release and then use these instructions uh, in the Chrome. So, like, either download the Safari extension from the latest release or follow the instructions. So, let's download the latest release from Safari. And there's the latest release. And then I've got to run this. And then I've got to configure unsigned extensions. And then, and all I could think of as I'm looking down this list, I'm just like, I'll just pay them the £3 or whatever it is. I'm just, <laughs> and then I can just auto-update. I won't have to do any of this. Uh, so, that did. That was one of the times where I was like, 
I get why they're doing it, and I get all of it, and I'm not mad, but at the same time, I'm like, it's just usually I just click it and it install, it downloads and installs, but then I had extra, st- I have to like do this and, and convert it, and I just, I just more work than I want to do. I pay them the three pound or whatever it is just to not do that. Um, so it was irksome, but not annoying, if you know what I mean. And Sponsor Block is, if you haven't used Sponsor Block, you should, because as I've said this many times before, YouTubers. You should make money from your Patreon. You should ask people. You should be like, hey, if you want to give me some cash for what I do, that'd be great, right? What you should not do is go, here's my sponsor, because that's a bullshit thing. I mean, if, like, it's different, it's kind of different. Someone sends you, if, if you get sent a game and you do, do a video on the game, that's like buy nails. That's like giving some nails to a carpenter, right? That's like fine, right? There's no, there's no problem there, in my mind. Or if, like, you're a tech channel and you review hardware and they send you a mouse no one sent me a mouse for the I'm just this is just an example um or they send you a trackpad you know I'm not I've never done this but I don't get mad when a channel that's about technology shows me technology and they're like oh they, 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 we got sent this right but what does make me pissed off is when I'm watching a video and it's like let's talk about some glasses company let's talk about a shaving company let's talk about a company that sends toilet rolls let's talk about Audible which by the way I love Audible but I would never accept a sponsorship um uh, it just annoys me and it's a waste of my time and I pay for YouTube premium because I don't want me and my family seeing ads so it's extra annoying when I'm like I'm paying not to see ads and I'm still getting ads so for me sponsor block is essential so I didn't mind paying the money little rant over there and also you should also I'm not saying you should get all your stuff for free you should support your creators if there's a creator you like you should give them some money I give a couple of creators money on Bandcamp that I really like because I like their stuff a lot and I want to I want to give them that money but you don't owe these people anything, right? They're on a free platform. Just watch their shit for free. It's fine. Um, so yeah, there's that. And again, this pro- I'm technically minded enough that this wouldn't have been hugely challenging. But I was like, every time there's an update, I'm gonna have to do this, or I'm gonna have to like mess about, or it might break. And I just, I just don't want to deal with it. And again, a lot of you are sitting there. And you're gonna type in comments, go, it's not even that hard. It's one command. Like, yeah, I just don't want to do it. I just give them the money because <laughs> just give them the money. It's fine. Um, and then the last application which I'm going to talk about, which I do kind of feel a little bit irksome about, is Whipper. Now, there is no ad block origin on Apple, right, for whatever reason, uh, because everything's WebKit-based and Safari and it's all this, right? So, sure, I could install Edge or I could install Chrome, but I just want to use Safari because I like it. I know, shocking. Um, it's got some thing features I really like. So, yeah, there you go. Um, but the ad block solutions, there are two big ones that people talk about. Um, the big one is AdGuard. AdGuard puts an application on your P on your actual desktop computer, on your laptop, on your OS. There you go. Um, and it runs basically a VPN, and everything goes through a local VPN. Now, that's a fine way of doing it. And that's a really good way of doing it. And that's global ad blocking. And I've got no problem with doing that, right? And it's like a lifetime sub of like $20 or whatever. And it's like, so it's not even that expensive. But I also don't want a VPN running permanently on my computer. <laughs> like, I just use Mulvad if I want that, right? And I get it's advanced ad blocking. Um, but I just didn't want to go down that route. I just wanted something in my browser so I know I'm not having problems caused by other applications, you know? Because obviously, it's obvious from everyone that, like, I've got a VPN. I've got Mulvad right here. I can activate any time for just one VPN, which will block ads, right? But Wiper was the option I went with. Because it's the other one. Well, it's not even that vocally talked about. Because people talk about ad block. Um, but yeah, Wiper is the one that seems to be the zero hassle solution. So Wiper without an E, yeah, um, Wiper, yeah, that's without an E. Uh, it's one ninety nine, uh, and this is not what irked me because one ninety nine. After I've already spent all this money on Apple stuff, is not enough money to make me mad, right? Um, but what made me mad is I had to buy it twice because I was like, oh, Wiper's really good. So I bought Wiper on my iPad. I was like, oh, Wiper's really cool. Wiper, like, it's zero configuration. And how it works is, uh, let's just bring up uh, the config here. Oh, my gosh. Let's bring, let's, let's oh, fuck, where did that go? <laughs> where did it go? Oh, my gosh. There it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, okay. It's on the wrong screen. It's on the wrong screen. There we go. So, like, I installed it, and then you just click the boxes, and that is essentially your entire configuration, right? That's it. That, that's what you do. You click the buttons, done. <laughs> that's like all you have to do and there's no config options and a lot of people are like i want to be able to block elements and stuff and it's like well i want the bulk of ads blocked but like like i feel like stopping to deal with an ad is already more time than i want to spend in dealing with ads so i was like i just want to use wiper so i installed on my ipad and uh it's great wiper is really 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 good it works enough 
that I don't have to worry about it. It's like, I get the odd one skip through, whatever, but like intrusive wise, it's got rid of all the elements I would normally block, uh, I would normally bother blocking. So I was like, I was really happy with it. And then, like, then I, I opened my MacBook up and I thought, oh, it's the wiper there too. And then I realized that like, it's a separate purchase for the Mac OS and the, the iOS version, or the, the iPad OS version. Um, so I've now got on all devices, great, because I had to go and install it on all devices. Um, but I had to buy it twice. So it took a $2 app to be a $4 app. And that kind of irked me off. Now, I know the reason. It's not because Wiper predicts, right? Because the problem is that the the, the the whole way it interfaces on the two separate platforms, they have to be listed separately. And then they can't, like, bill once for two. They say it's 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 a mechanical thing. Um, that's probably the wrong word. But, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's 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 wiper's basically got no configuration options. I, I was going to bring it up myself, but like this is literally it. You just like there's no configuration options. You just install wiper and you turn on all the you, you turn on all the things, and and then that's that's it. <laughs> that's all you have to do. Uh, and there's loads. And the reason there's loads is because there's a maximum number of th- of actions a single extension can perform. So there's a bunch of them. Just that's how they deal with it. Um, for anyone, I know people are going to ask. Yeah, I also bought Noir. Uh, which is just puts me in dark mode and how noir works is you just you just like you just you just and then you have to refresh and it just oh does it not even work on oh it doesn't even work on this site oh my gosh it doesn't even work on this site what has even happened that is that is not what i wanted okay so basically you, you just you just it just you just dark mode sites with a key combo um it just literally just turns it on and off um so just just on on this website, it won't make a difference because this this website is 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 already dark, so it won't make a difference. But yeah, it, it just makes websites dark. What's one on Wiki? Actually, Wikipedia is a good example. Uh, Wikipedia, the Wikipedia is a good example. Um, let's look at Wikipedia. There you go. Look nice and dark. Um, there are different themes. I'm still playing with themes, but I quite like this one. It's a bit blown out. It's a bit contrasty for a lot of people, um, but that's okay because we can click up here and we can select theme and we can just go with dark and then we'll get a much more subdued theme. So yeah, it's all right. I, I quite. I quite like this plugin, but again, this is another one that's four quid that I didn't want to go talk about because it's hardly essential. Um, but the ones I have spoke about, so Alfred, Bartender, and um, and the, the two plugins I talked about, two plugins, the two plugins I talked about, um, I feel like they're kind of essential features. So these are ways Apple have mo- even more money out of me. Or not even Apple, actually, just developers have got even more money out of me. Um, I think Bartender was is worth it be- by virtue of being a proper application that's been worked on. Um, I like that. Um, I think the um, I think I think I think Alfred is worth it because it does everything I want, not necessarily because it should be charging that much money. Like it seems overpriced, but it's still like I'd rather have it than not have it. Um, sponsor block it was just laziness, and Wiper was as I said the irksome thing is the fact it's two purchases. Uh, but yeah, good job, good job Apple is all I can say. There is this other thing I keep seeing advertised. Um, I think it's called app set or app yeah set app sorry i got the wrong way around uh so you pay them nine dollars a month and you get all these apps you can just access for free it's for you can air quotes for free um don't know how i feel about it. like i think depending how many of these you're going to use like for like bartenders in there so i could pay for this for three months uh, for, for one and a half months instead of buying bartender but Alfred's not in there, so I still would. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, did, did you see that? Look, look. There you go. Look, did, is it working? Look, I forgot about that. Mac does these these video response things now. Look, that just are just just on my camera for some reason, which I forgot about. But I do like I do, <laughs> I, do I do like I do like that one. Look, look double thumbs up. Is it, yeah, is it single thumbs up for balloons? I don't single single for balloons. Is it is it? Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, okay, who knows? Um. Yeah, <laughs> the video, they're weird. I don't understand them, but there you go. It's, it's a bit late, but whatever. Um, yeah, weird. Maybe we should make a video about how those and how weird they are. There's also this one. If I just do this, um, there you go. <laughs> like, what is that? What is that? That's amazing. Um, yeah, so who knows? Anyway, um, back to what I was saying before I got rudely distracted by uh, by balloons. Um, Apple, yeah, uh, you've got stop motion. Uh, there's, there's, there's a bunch in here, but yeah, I think... Depends how long, because like of the things in here, there's not that much I would use. I've got to work out if I could just subscribe to the, or just buy or subscribe these things separately um, before before it's worth the money. But there's a lot in here. It might be worth subscribing for a month just to try a bunch of stuff, or just using the free trials to try a bunch of stuff. Um, 
because I could see I could see like the discoverability and stuff like this good, but I wouldn't want to pay as much as I pay for Netflix to get apps that I want to use all the time. Because like, what happens if you have problem with payment methods and all of a sudden half your shit stops working? That would concern me. Um, that would concern me a great deal. But yeah, setup's an option. Maybe it's cool. I don't know. That yeah, this one of the things I have to have a little think about and have a little look at what's in there. But like, there's a couple of things in there I want to try. But yeah, if, if they're like a couple of quid each, I'd be like. Well, for the price of one month subscription, I can have two of these apps, so I might as well just, you know, collect them myself uh, as I need them. But who knows? Uh, yeah, anyway, maybe we'll go through that at some point. Maybe we'll go through that at some point. Um, there are more apps. I have purchased a couple of more apps since I've had a Mac just to get things done because it was easier to purchase, like, to spend two quid than it would be to um, to start digging through, the st- d- digging through the free options and stuff. But, yeah, uh, good job, Apple. Got some money out of me. Um, I've been XDSL. This has been my Ways Mac Has Got Money Out of Me video. Um, thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe, yo. Uh, and also, if you're interested, you can support my app habit over on Patreon. Uh, you can go to patreon.xdsl.com for a quick link there. Or buy me a gift on my Amazon wishlist over at wishlist.xdsl.com. Also, I did get a book arrived recently from someone in chat, which was thank you very much. You know who you are. I got a lovely bound book, which I was really, really appreciative of. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.